The male protagonist of this anime, Glenn, is a teacher who hates going to school more than the students. He is late on his first day of teaching, and asks the students to study by themselves. Besides, his biggest hobby is to tease the beautiful students. But few people know he is a super powerful magician. He was admitted to the best magical academy at the age of 11, and after graduation, he becomes an imperial court mage and saves the kidnapped princess alone. Why would Glenn hide his true strength? Let's get it revealed. The story starts at a place called the Alzano Imperial Magical Academy. This academy has a history of four centuries and is a prestigious institution where top-notch magic can be learned. Rumia is a student in the second grade, class two, due to family reasons. She's currently staying at her good friend Sistine's house. They are classmates and share a very close bond. They encounter Glenn, the male protagonist, on their way to school. Glenn is made to fly into the air by Sistine using whirlwind magic to stop him from running into them. Glenn quickly apologizes to them when he falls. He doesn't understand why Rumia seems so familiar to him. Sistine accuses Glenn of being a pervert because Glenn touches Rumia's body. Glenn is once more chased away by her using whirlwind magic. But she has no idea Glenn is their class's new professor. Glenn is incredibly lazy. He lacks enthusiasm for his job. He switches his magic class to a self-study session on his first day of work and dozes off at his desk. Sistine is not pleased with Glenn's action at all. Glenn is forcibly awakened and asked to teach them by Sistine. Glenn reluctantly wakes up and begins his lesson. His explanation of the spell is messy and his handwriting is pretty sloppy. When the bell rings, Glenn is the first one to leave the classroom. In fact, Glenn was once a magic genius, and at the age of 11, he was accepted into the Academy of Magic of Alzano Empire. However, his post-graduation resume is empty. In addition to lacking a teaching license, his abilities are barely average. Glenn's master, Selica, was important in enabling him to succeed as a professor. As an extremely skilled mage, Selica has attained the greatest degree. Glenn was accepted by the principal based on her strong recommendation. Glenn unintentionally enters the female locker room after school. He is quite different from others. He doesn't turn his head right away but instead tries to remember the scene. Glenn gets kicked out by Sistine using magic because she is so furious. Surprisingly, during lunch, she runs into Glenn again. Sistine has a strong dislike for Glenn and thinks he is not suitable to be a professor. To avoid arguing with her, Glenn tries to stuff his food into Sistine's mouth. He never wanted to become a professor in the first place. However, if he rejects Selica's offer, he will face her wrath and punishment. Fearful of Selica, Glenn was forced to accept the position against his will. Sistine despises Glenn's sour attitude on his job. She offers Glenn one final piece of advice in the afternoon lesson. Sistine has a lot of influence in the academy and comes from a strong magic family. Glenn will be fired by her father if he doesn't put in a lot of effort once more. Glenn unsurprisingly rejoices greatly at this. This attitude repulses Sistine. She decides to challenge Glenn because she believes he has tainted the magic. Glenn agrees to the challenge but requests that Sistine only use Shock Volt. The most basic form of magic uses a tiny quantity of electricity to paralyze the body. Glenn strangely is unable to use Volt attacks, and he succumbs to Sistine rather soon. To be eligible for the prize, Sistine has to ask Glenn to teach them seriously. However, Glenn refuses to fulfill her request. He continues to teach with a very laid-back attitude, turning every class into a self-study session. Sistine feels quite let down by Glenn's approach to teaching. When Lynn, a female classmate, approaches Glenn with questions, Sistine intervenes. She believes that magic is fascinating and that they are missing out on learning because of Glenn's lack of seriousness. Glenn, on the other hand, presents a different perspective, arguing that magic only brings destruction. Sistine strongly disagrees, insisting that magic is a true seeking science. Frustrated, she slaps Glenn as she cannot agree with his views. After arguing with Sistine, Glenn feels unfit to continue as a professor. Just as he decides to apologize to Selica, he notices Rumia, who remains in the lab. Rumia is trying a magic array, but she runs into a bottleneck and can't make the magic array work. Glenn offers to assist her. A smile spreads across Rumia's face as soon as the magic array is activated. Glenn is brought back by her smile to a happier time when he shared Rumia's love of magic. Glenn questions Rumia about her intense love for magic. Rumia tells him that she wants to learn more about magic and then use it to benefit humanity. Three years ago, Rumia was hunted down for family circumstances. She was saved by an unknown mage just as she was about to be slain. Rumia is very grateful to the mage, and she wants to learn magic hard and repay his kindness. Before parting, Rumia wants Glenn to apologize to Sistine. Since Sistine's grandfather is no longer alive, magic is their only remaining connection. Her grandpa's greatest lifelong wish was to enter the flying castle. Sistine made the commitment to help his grandfather realize this wish before he passed away. Upon hearing Sistine's story, Glenn feels remorseful and decides to apologize to her in front of the entire class. From that day on, he no longer hides his true abilities. Glenn starts teaching magic in a remarkable way, offering unique insights to his students. He emphasizes that the highest degree of magic will not be constrained by spells, encouraging the trainees not to depend solely on them. 
the students begin to enjoy Glenn's classes, and within a few days, he becomes the most popular teacher in the academy. Helping others brings a sense of fulfillment to Glenn, and he finds joy in witnessing his students' smiles. Glenn soon gets used to campus life, but he never anticipates being assassinated while walking. Glenn is incredibly perceptive, and he quickly learns that the group is affiliated with a malicious organization. Two other members of the evil organization enter the classroom in the meantime and attempt to apprehend Rumia. Sistine interrupts them, and as a result, she too is dragged away. When Sistine is about to be violated, Glenn saves her. Glenn's skill is called the Fool's World, which can negate the activation of all magic. He then uses martial arts to defeat members of this evil organization. Using a communication bracelet, Glenn informs Celica about the ended battle. However, Celica cannot return immediately due to the destruction of the school's teleportation array by the evil group. As a result, Glenn takes on the responsibility of safeguarding the students. At this point, a man by the name of Reich summons the puppet legion using magic. Glenn instructs Sistine to use her specialty magic to stall them while he uses the strongest attack magic possible to take down the puppet legion. Glenn, however, is physically weary as a result of the advanced magic being used forcibly. Reich is surprised by Glenn's strength. He shows up in front of Glenn freely after the puppet legion is defeated. Reich's weapon cannot currently be sealed by Sistine due to a lack of mana. Glenn shoves Sistine downstairs and tells her to look for a chance to ambush him when her mana recovers. Glenn and Sistine collaborate to seal Reich's weapon, and Sistine assists Glenn in killing him. Sistine wants to treat Glenn. She uses all of her mana to cure Glenn before unintentionally falling asleep. Glenn makes the decision to rescue Rumia alone when he wakes up. The person who is watching over Rumia is also a professor at the Academy of Magic, named Huey. Huey has already set up two teleportation arrays in advance. In just 10 minutes, the teleportation array will send Rumia to the organization's base. Even if Glenn tries to deactivate the teleportation array, another one will take her there automatically. Rumia, in distress, asks Glenn to leave her alone as she doesn't want to drag him into danger. However, Glenn is determined to stay true to his beliefs. Despite the hardships in the magical world, he wants to be a righteous messenger of magic and refuses to compromise his values. Glenn lifts the first teleportation array but unfortunately passes out. He makes an impression on Rumia. Rumia tries to get beyond the barrier and use her amplifier on Glenn. Glenn regains his magic since Rumia has the ability to amplify magic 10 times. He eliminates Huey and lifts the final teleportation array on Rumia. After the crisis at Magical Academy, Celica tells Glenn a secret. Rumia's real identity is the princess of the Alzano Empire. The Alzano Empire claims that the amplifier is a representation of the devil and that people cannot tolerate it. If royals are skilled at amplifier, it could not be good for the nation. Due to Rumia's ownership of the amplifier, the royal family exiled her. Celica and the principal are the only people who currently know the secret. Glenn believes that he has nothing to do with the secret. He eventually learns to love teaching and is only interested in helping his students as much as possible. The magic tournament of the Alzano Empire Magical Academy is about to begin. There are rumors that Her Majesty will be attending the event to witness it firsthand. Glenn is dead serious about winning this tournament. He plans and organizes events for each student based on their individual strengths. The reason behind his intense effort is the desire to claim the prize. Glenn really needs the reward due to his tight financial situation. However, his students don't have any obvious advantages. Other classes will send their top performing students for the competition. For Glenn's class, they have to defeat the very best students if Glenn wants to win. When Glenn is worried about the competition, the issue of the practice field causes friction between Glenn's class and class 1. Glenn consults with Hallie, the teacher of class 1, to resolve the dispute between the students. Hallie urges Glenn to give up the practice field since he believes his team will win the game. Glenn is furious. He chooses to wager three months' worth of wages on Hallie. Hallie is highly certain of himself and is willing to wager on equal pay. At this point, Sistine believes Hallie has insulted her classmates and charges him. Hallie does not dispute Sistine's claims because Sistine is a descendant of the nobility. Sistine believes they will win the game and helps Glenn make the bet. But what she doesn't know is that Glenn regrets it so much, and he feels sorry for his salary. If Sistine hasn't spoken, he would have apologized to Hallie. With Sistine's help, the bet is made. In order to win the magic tournament, Glenn has to actively prepare for the competition. The magic tournament officially starts one week later. When Her Majesty the Queen arrives, she makes an effort to reconcile with her daughter, Rumia. Three years ago, she left Rumia and has been feeling regretful ever since. As the competition progresses, Rumia's class performs admirably. Rumia participates in a contest for mental strength. It has been a while since she last saw Her Majesty, and she is eager to demonstrate her abilities. With her efforts, she manages to win the competition. Glenn is quite hungry after the morning round. He doesn't have any money to buy meals, so all he can do is enviously observe others' lunches. Lin then approaches Glenn at that point. Since Lin lacks confidence and will be competing in a transformation magic tournament, she requests Glenn to alter the competitor. Glenn is aware of Lin's passion for transformational magic. Glenn gives Lin some advice to help her become more self-assured. He takes Rumia's form and explains transformation magic to Lin. Lin resolves to put in a lot of effort to win with Glenn's support. 
Glenn is now mistaken for Rumia by Sistine, who wants to share a meal with him. Glenn can't say no to Sistine since he is starving, but Rumia shows up before he has the first bite. Glenn tries to steal Sistine's sandwiches, but she manages to erase his enchantment. She is so furious that she summons a whirlwind to chase Glenn away. Actually, Sistine prepared some sandwiches for Glenn beforehand, but due to their argument, Sistine ends up throwing the sandwiches away. However, Rumia notices this and decided to pick them up, thinking it will be a shame to waste food. She then offers the sandwiches to Glenn, who thoroughly enjoys them, oblivious to the fact that Sistine was the one who made them. Glenn finishes his meal before Her Majesty arrives. Rumia is Her Majesty's priority, not Glenn. Rumia, however, refuses to acknowledge Her Majesty and refuses to acknowledge herself as a princess. Her Majesty is quite depressed. Rumia leaves the chat and doesn't come back to the game. She can't forget that Her Majesty left her, yet she can't help but crave a relationship with her. Glenn explains to Rumia that people are creatures who second-guess their decisions. In his opinion, Rumia should follow her heart, even if she later regrets it. Glenn was a court mage. He frequently visited the court as a result of his standing. He is aware that Her Majesty misses Rumia because he saw the identical jewelry on her. Rumia is advised by Glenn to be honest with Her Majesty. Rumia is detained by a gang of royal soldiers who accuse her of plotting to kill Her Majesty just as she is about to decide to go see her. Rumia is completely distraught as she believes that Her Majesty is plotting to kill her, and Glenn suspects that the royal guard captain is playing some kind of trick. After rescuing Rumia, he turns to Selika for help. However, Selika, fully aware of the challenges when facing the royal family, feels unable to assist Glenn. She urges him to find a way to meet the queen, seeing him as the only one who can come up with a solution. Glenn is deeply troubled about how to approach the queen. Just then, a mysterious girl assassinates him. Riel is the unidentified girl. She is a former co-worker of Glenn's and hails from the Imperial Court Mage Corps. After Glenn vanquishes Riel, Albert, her partner, appears. Albert orders them to put an end to their antics. Right now, things are really tricky. Her Majesty is being observed by the Royal Guard. They choose to murder Rumia in defiance of Her Majesty's directives. Glenn resolves to work with the Court Mage Corps in order to save the Queen. He and Rumia use transfiguration magic to transform into Albert and Riel. Before the competition, Glenn asks Class 2 to win the magic tournament so that he can meet Her Majesty at the time of the award. On the field, Lynn does exceptionally well under Glenn's coaching. The rest of the students also perform admirably. Sistine is the last to compete. She displays excellent magic power and wins with a clear advantage. In the end, Class 2 is the winner of the magic tournament. Glenn reverses the enchantment of the metamorphosis once the award ceremony has started. He wants Her Majesty to punish the guard's captain after exposing the guard's captain's murder of Rumia. Her Majesty unexpectedly becomes under the grip of the guards and is compelled to decide to assassinate Rumia. Her Majesty doesn't really want to kill Rumia. Glenn realizes after considering everything she has done for her. Glenn surmises that the jewelry worn by Her Majesty is flawed. He disables magic by using skill to accomplish this. When the necklace's enchantment is removed, Her Majesty expresses her actual feelings. She regrets hurting Rumia because she has always loved her dearly. Meanwhile, Albert discovers the maid of Her Majesty, who performed the spell on the necklace. The maid's name is Charlotte, and she belongs to the evil organization. She uses a teleportation array to flee after being discovered by Albert. Albert then tells Glenn about it in the hopes that he would be vigilant. After Albert leaves, Glenn meets up with Rumia. She is extremely grateful for Glenn's help and wonders how he could tell that Her Majesty was lying. Glenn explains that the Queen personally asked him to find Rumia when she was kidnapped. He could sense her genuine concern and worry for Rumia, which convinced him that the Queen wouldn't harm her intentionally. When Rumia discovers that Glenn was the one who rescued her, she is deeply touched. Later, Glenn joins their class's celebration event. At the restaurant, he spends all of his prize money and bet winnings because the prices are ridiculously high. Over the time, Glenn gives special training to Sistine. If Sistine wants to protect Rumia, she must learn military magic. In order to improve her physical fitness, Glenn decides to teach her boxing first. Glenn and Sistine aren't the only ones who care about Rumia's life. The Imperial Army does as well. Riel is tasked to guard Rumia in secret. She enrolls as a transfer student and is put in Rumia's class. Her classmates are impressed by Riel's strength and magic prowess. Riel gradually integrates into campus life with Rumia and Sistine's assistance. A week later, Glenn takes the students on a field trip to an island. He is delighted to see his female students wearing swimsuits. Later, the male students plan to sneak into the female students' hostel after dark, which they see as a fun activity that can't be missed during the field trip. However, Glenn learns of their plan and tries to stop them. This leads to a heated argument between Glenn and the male students. Despite their attempts, they are no match for Glenn's strength, and their plan ultimately fails. Riel is currently being taken to the beach by Sistine and Rumia, where they have a terrific time. Glenn is happy to see them interacting and having fun. He is unaware that Riel dislikes Sistine and Rumia. She is furious because she believes they have snatched Glenn. Riel is not mentally stable. She and Rumia argue later on her school excursion. 
Glenn notes that Riel has a relatively young mental age and that she only occasionally develops a bias. He will be in charge of tracking down Riel and is hoping that they won't make a scene. Meanwhile, Albert notices someone sneaking towards Riel and attempts to rescue her, but Charlotte intervenes, stopping him. While Albert and Charlotte are engaged in a conflict, Glenn finds Riel by the sea, only to be attacked by her. Riel not only stabs Glenn but also kidnaps Rumia. Sistine witnesses Riel harming Rumia but is too afraid to cast magic on her. Albert brings the hurt Glenn to their room after Rumia is taken away. Glenn suffers severe wounds. Glenn needs Sistine's assistance because healing him requires a lot of mana. Together, they assist Glenn in regaining consciousness. Albert tells Glenn that he has long guessed that Riel would be used by evil organizations. He intends to use Rumia as bait to destroy the evil organization hiding behind it. Albert pisses Glenn off a lot. Albert thinks Glenn has betrayed them. Riel would not have strayed if he has not abandoned the Imperial Court Mage Corps. Glenn feels so bad that he promises to save Riel. Albert settles with Glenn after getting his assurances. Albert hands over Riel to Glenn, telling him his first job is to save Rumia. Luckily, they placed a tracking spell on Rumia, which makes it easy to find the evil organization's hideout. However, one of the evil organization's members disguises himself as Riel's brother and commands her to kill Glenn. He deceives Riel, who then insists on confronting Glenn. Glenn casts magic to lock Riel up while attacking members of the evil organization. Reminded by Glenn, Riel reminisces about her past. Riel's brother's name was Cyan, and they were both once part of the evil organization. Cyan eventually betrayed the organization, providing Glenn with valuable information and asking him to save Riel. Unfortunately, Cyan paid the ultimate price for his betrayal with his life. During a time when the evil organization was creating a clone, Riel was seriously injured, and Glenn decided to implant her memories into the clone's mind. Riel feels terribly depressed after regaining her memory since she now believes she is only a puppet. Glenn, however, explains to her that she is not a puppet because a puppet is thoughtless but she will live for precious things. She realizes that her mind has gone awry and takes the initiative to eliminate all the clones. Glenn defeats the members of the evil organization and completes his mission to save Riel and Rumia. Rumia and Sistine forgive Riel for her mistakes and become friends with her again. In the following story, Sistine's fiancé Leos comes to teach at the Alzano Empire Magical Academy. Sistine thinks the engagement thing is just a joke they had when they were kids, and they can't be considered fiancés. Unexpectedly, Leos likes her very much and confesses love to her in public. Leos refuses to give up. When they are alone, he proposes to Sistine. However, Sistine declines his proposal. Her main focus is on unraveling the mysteries of the Sky Castle, and she needs to expand her magical knowledge to make that dream come true. Leos wants Sistine to assist him in studying military magic, as he believes her dream is impractical. Glenn overhears their conversation and becomes disgusted with Leos. He also feels that Sistine is out of Leos' league. Leos, thinking that their business has nothing to do with Glenn, argues with him. To get rid of Leos, Sistine intentionally claims that she and Glenn are in love. Seeing through Sistine's strategy, Glenn challenges Leos as Sistine's fiancé. Leos accepts the challenge and agrees to discuss the details of the duel another day. Soon after, Glenn and Leos decide to fight in a team battle. They instruct the students of the second and fourth classes respectively to conduct magic competitions. In terms of combat effectiveness, class 4 is indeed stronger than class 2. However, Glenn from the Imperial Court Mage Corps excels at working as a team. He also lays traps in the arena to help him win the duel. Glenn and Leos are deadlocked at the conclusion of the three-hour fight. Glenn chooses to battle against Leos alone and sets the time for a day later because Leos insists on having the outcome. Sistine is quite irate that she is not the wager being used in the competition. She finds it particularly depressing as Glenn has consistently claimed that if Leos wins, he can marry her and lead a luxurious life. She is perplexed by Glenn's statement. She slaps Glenn in a fury. Rumia also finds it difficult to understand Glenn's behavior, but she believes in his honesty and thinks he must have other reasons for his actions. Comforted by Rumia's trust, Sistine decides to talk to Glenn. During their conversation, Glenn mentions that Sistine reminds him of his former friend Sarah. As a child, Glenn aspired to become a skilled mage, but after joining the Imperial Court Mage Corps, he realized that the mage was far from the noble path he imagined, and it was filled with violence and bloodshed. The harsh reality made him resent magic deeply. If it hadn't been for Sarah's unwavering support for his dream, he might have given up altogether. However, a tragic mistake during a mission resulted in Sarah's death, and Glenn was devastated. He abandoned his dream and left the Imperial Court Mage Corps. At the Magical Academy, Glenn encountered Sistine for the first time and was impressed by her determination and ambition. When Leos insulted Sistine's dream, it deeply affected Glenn, and that's why he wants to defeat Leos in their upcoming duel. The appearance of Leos at this time ends their conversation. He believes Glenn is lying and that Glenn has a violent and bloody history. Glenn assaults Leos out of enmity. Leos' strength, however, is something he does not anticipate. Glenn can be defeated by Leos without the use of magic at all. Glenn departs, and Leos demands that Sistine wed him by threatening her with Rumia and Riel. Sistine anticipates Glenn rescuing her, 
Glenn, though, is never seen in the academy again after that day. Sistine agrees to Leo's marriage proposal in order to defend her friends. Rumia is so worried that she informs Glenn of Sistine's marriage and asks him for assistance in solving the problem. Glenn believes Sistine is not consensual and vows to prevent the wedding. Glenn flees with Sistine on the wedding day. He has been studying magic diligently in order to defeat Leo's. During this time, a bunch of drug users appear in the academy. Unfortunately, they turn into zombies and start heading towards Glenn, who then feels very shocked. It reminds him of Sarah, who was also killed by those illegal drugs. To protect Sistine from experiencing a similar tragedy, Glenn takes down all the zombies. However, Sistine is frightened when she sees Glenn killing others. Leo's catches up with them before she can figure out how to deal with Glenn. Glenn reveals Leo's true face, Jadis, his former co-worker. Jadis executed Leo's after the group battle. Glenn is dueled by Jadis using Leo's and Sistine. Glenn is aware that he must face Jadis. Sistine is urged to go, and he stays behind to handle Jadis. Jadis's goal is to uphold justice, but despite this, he continues to murder. He desires to possess the Akashic records in order to rule the world. Glenn and Jadis fight fiercely, but he never anticipates Sistine really returning to assist him. Sistine is aware of how she feels toward Glenn. She wants Glenn to be by her side always because she views him as an irreplaceable individual. Glenn and Sistine team up to defeat Jadis. Before fleeing, Jadis tells Glenn that the Alzano Empire is dissolving and that he can't wait until he sees him once more. At the end of the story, Glenn returns to his role as a professor. When he sees Sistine, he recalls a story he watched as a child. In the tale, a mage is asked by the demon lord, what drives you to such determination? I don't understand. The mage replies, because I have something important to protect and cherish. The moment I think about this, an overwhelming power fills me, allowing me to stand up whenever needed. Now, Glenn finally understands what the mage meant and finds the one that he wants to protect. That brings the end of this anime. It is revealed from the battle between Glenn and Jadis that the author tries to interpret his ideal good and evil through this anime. Glenn has dreamed of being a righteous mage since childhood, so he never thinks the magic he loves so much will become a tool for killing. After a long period of confusion, he finally realizes the meaning of magic's existence, which can be used to protect others. I believe he will definitely fight till the end for Sistine. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like to help my channel out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Your support means a lot to me. Bye.